Welcome, this is Power Trading Radio Live, fueled by Online Trading Academy. For more information, visit PowerTradingRadio.com. Now, here's your host, Merlin Rothfeld. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Power Trading Radio. Merlin Rothfeld to you for your Wednesday edition. Happy Hump Day, everybody. Hope you had a fantastic trading day out there. Uh, our guest today is going to be Ron Lembo. He'll be on segments two and three. So if you have any questions regarding equities or just trading in general, you can send those questions on in at powertradingradio.com. We'll click the button there that says Power Up Last. And hello to all of our podcast downloaders on iTunes. Hope you have a good workout. For all of you on our YouTube channels and our online trading academy as well as Power Trading Radio, hope you have a great session out there as well. We're broadcasting live, so feel free to type into your chat your comments, your questions, your suggestions, and hopefully we'll get to all that as we progress through today's show. All right, let's start off with the... Uh, the major announcement, I mentioned we're going to have a pretty important announcement here to start our show on Power Trading Radio, and I was all set to have uh, Al Shahar on the program, but he's, there's so much going on right now, I couldn't get him out for the opening segment of the show. So, what I will tell you uh, is there is a, a series of webinars being hosted by, actually there's two more coming up here. One will be today at 5 p.m. Pacific time. The next one will be tomorrow, that's Thursday, at 6 p.m. Pacific time. I would encourage all of you who are Online Trading Academy graduates to take some time and go into one of those two sessions so you guys can hear kind of the major announcements that's going on. There's some very big things happening here at Online Trading Academy, some things we're uh, pretty excited about as well. So I'll show you how to do that. If you go to, uh, TJ's got it up here, He's, you've got, you have my, you're in my OTA with my account, TJ. Don't do anything bad in there, okay? So here's your landing page, and you log into myota.tradingacademy.com. For all of you who are online trading academy graduates, you are you have access to this one. So if you uh, scroll down a little bit under messages, you will see that there is a you're invited to an important webinar. So if you click on that one, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening. We had one at 10 o'clock this morning, which had well over a thousand people in it. So thanks to everyone who came in to that session. There will be two more, and again, it's a pretty major announcement. I would really encourage you guys to check this one out. Take some time out of your schedule and, and see what Al has to say. It's always great uh, having Al deliver these. He's got such passion for what he does and for this company and for our students as well. So we're looking forward to those two sessions, and I'll probably see you in that 5 p.m. session today. That's our major announcement for the uh, non-online training academy graduates. Well, we will. Um, let you know in a couple of days more about this announcement, but right now we're keeping it to our graduates. So there you go. Go to o myota at trainingacademy.com and you will uh, be able to register for that webinar. It's free to attend and I would encourage you all to do it if you're online training academy graduates. It's going to impact you. All right. Let's go to your top seven markets out there today. We had a, an interesting one, okay? So you have the uh, not surprising acquittal of President Trump. I was hoping, hoping for the haymaker from left field. Didn't quite happen, and of course, the markets took a little bit of a relief rally. And uh, of course, if you watched the show yesterday when we talked about Tesla, and I said, uh, I was begging you, please do not touch Tesla tomorrow. It's just too unpredictable. Right at the end of the show, we said, probably going to have a, a decent down day. Yeah, it, lo and behold, it did. Not bad enough to bring down the NASDAQ, which was mid-pack today. Let's start with our worst performer, and it's a rare day here at Power Training Radio. Why? Because all seven markets we are covering to start our show, we're in the positive today, which means it was one heck of a day. TJ, start me off with gold, which stopped its pretty aggressive two-day slide. You can see here a little bit of a green candle. Yeah, I don't know why I went with leprechaun. It's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, I guess. So there you have your little bounce up here with uh, the, the green candle. On the day, you had gold up 0.27%, 1,559 is where it finished at. So not a huge day. It was still up 0.27%. But when you look at some of these other index numbers and, and commodities and cryptos, this was, a, this was chump change move today for gold. Number six, NASDAQ 100 being brought down by Tesla quite a bit. There you go. Um, today's chart of the NASDAQ obviously impacted by Tesla, which is in the NASDAQ 100. You can see it's really kind of a shooting star formation on today's close after that big all-time high rally. Of course, you had all-time intraday highs and all-time closing highs. NASDAQ composite was up 0.43% on the session. That brought it to 9,000. 508 to close the day, but that was only number six, and that's almost half a percentage point. It gets better. S&P 500 is your next one, coming in in fifth place, 3,335, but you were right at that all-time high number. It is an all-time intraday closing high for the S&P. You can see right, right, right there. All-time intraday closing high, but not an all-time intraday. Is it all-time intraday? Let me see if it's an all-time intraday high. Uh, let's see, all-time high, 338 and change, da, 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 and I think actually we did break it all. To, yep, we broke it by a half a point today. So we are all-time high intraday and closing for the S&P 500 today. That brought the S&P up 1.13%, as I mentioned, to 3,334, and we are one point higher than that in our after-hour session right now. But still, fifth place with 1.13%. 
That means it just gets better from here. Russell 2000 is where we're going to next. Boom. I actually thought we might hesitate right at that little area of supply just because this balance was pretty strong. Right here, I thought we'd hesitate. Uh, we ripped right through it to the next area of supply, which is even better. This is actually a great supply zone from my perspective. And it's also after this candlestick pattern here, which is called, normally they call it the three white soldiers, which is a trend reversal formation. Believe it or not, if you look up Steve Nissen's candlesticks book, which is overly priced, don't buy it, just uh, look it up online what three white soldiers are. This is generally a uh, reversal formation out there and you can see come right into an area of supply on the Russell 2000, which on the day was up 1.52%. Hallelujah, nice move. 1,681, it's up even more than that in our after hours session. Okay. Moving to the podium, it's no indexes in here. It's treasuries, it's crude oil, and it's cryptocurrencies. Brendan's not with us today. He's getting his back straightened out, he told me yesterday, but we are, he's probably pretty excited about this one. Now, here's your 10-year. This is the 10-year U.S. Treasury note futures. You can see a pretty decent move down today, right almost closing this gap. I guess you could argue that it did close the gap if you go by the wicks. The Treasury yield today jumped 2.87%. Remember, it was like a pretty big day yesterday of over 5%. You're looking at 1.649 on the 10-year yield. Now, of course, over the past three days, we've had a pretty aggressive sell-off in the, in the price of these bonds, which means the yields have been rising rather, rather sharply. That was your third place finisher. Crude oil having a nice bounce off that $50 mark, which we talked about. We, we kind of anticipated it. It did dip below it, uh, but then ripped up today. We had a pretty nice session. At one point today, you had crude oil hitting a high of 51.88, so uh, a nice move out there in crude oil. It finished the day, though, at 51.17. That's a gain of 3.14% on the day for crude oil. Not too shabby. All right, and finally, Yes, where's Brendan when you want him? The cryptocurrencies were the movers and shakers out there today. You look at Bitcoin, uh, 9,633 is where it finished on the day. That was a 5.05% gain, but th that's not the real story, I don't think. It's, it's really about some of the altcoins. So we'll go to uh, the price page here just to give you an idea. You had Ethereum was up 8%, Bitcoin Cash up 14, uh, Litecoin up 7. I mean, some of these are pretty nice movers. Some are getting the double digits like Tezos. There was another double digit one down here. Uh, Dash was up 10%, came down a little bit. But a lot of these altcoins doing rather well today. Not exactly why that is. I think it's just kind of time for another surge up in the crypto space as we've seen uh, it been beaten up for so long. As it is, the market for cryptocurrencies is up 5.76% today. Not too bad. All right, that is your top seven markets. Plus, we had a little extra additional stuff out there. Hopefully, some of that put some green into your pocket today. Let's go to, um, I had a couple questions here. Brendan asked this one, and I'm going to go into it just because I have the time today. Brendan says, after hours on futures trading, or basically after hours trading, period, but futures have that 24-hour element to it. He says, do you find that zones behave differently in low liquidity? Absolutely. And it leaves more open-ended questions, right? Because during the regular market hours, we, we know that market institutional traders and investors are active, right? Outside of those regular market hours, and we'll say, uh, you know, 9.30 California time to, to 4 p.m. Eastern time, or sorry, 9.30 Eastern time to 4 p.m. Eastern time, that's the regular market hours. Now, outside of that, there is generally a lot less liquidity, and we can see that on any, any kind of price chart. Uh, let's see if we can bring up click here, uh, and I'll add... Uh, I'm going to add in some volume on this one. No, no, no. No, I need to go to indic oh, indicator CJ, not on volume here. There is a, a lot to this with regards to how price moves at particular points of the day. So give me a second here while we add on uh, volume. I can't find the darn thing. I'm on uh, TUV. There we go. Uh, no. Darn it. My eyes. It's, it's in here somewhere. I just forgot where the heck I put it. Oh, TJ, you're, you're driving me crazy. I don't know where it's at. There it is, volume. Perfect. So this is during regular market, uh, this is a daily, right? So if I switch this down and say a five minute, you'll notice that on crude oil, and this is the crude oil, let's go to an index like the S&P 500, you'll notice that these blue bars are much more active at certain points of the day. This, of course, right now is set for California time, so it's going to be 6.30 in the morning California time to 1 p.m. California time. And you can see that that's where the bulk of the volume is. That said, you notice that starting about midnight last night, there was a, a decent amount of volume. But what about before that, right? Really from about 1 p.m. till about midnight, there's almost no volume going on. So Brendan's question is, do these levels act differently in that pre-market session or outside of regular market hours? And the answer is absolutely. And I have mixed opinions from different traders on this one. 
some will say, like Craig Weil, he doesn't like to use these after-hour levels. He feels that they're not, they're not stable. I have other traders who say they absolutely do mark potential turning points during regular market hours. And I'm more, I lean more towards that camp that during the regular market hours, if I see something rallying up, I'm going to go look and see where it was in the pre-market or what it did in the after-hour session just to see if those levels are coming into play. The difference here is, in order to turn a market during regular market hours, like on something like the S&P, you'd have to trade a lot of those S&P futures to move that market or to stop it and create a pivot. In the pre-market or after-market, outside of regular market hours, it's actually rather easy. You don't need to have a big block of shares or contracts to move it because it's very illiquid. So in a regular market hour, where it may take me a thousand contracts to move the S&P and cause it to actually change direction, I might be able to do it with 20 or 30 outside of regular market hours. So they are very different. They act very different with regards to illiquidity. Most of the institutional money and, and trading is going to be during regular market hours unless there's a major event like an election or, or a terrorist attack or something like that. Then you'll see a lot more volume outside of regular market hours, but those levels do act very different outside of regular market hours. All right, that will do it for opening segment. When we come back, we'll have Ron Lembo on the program. We're going to talk about equity markets today. We'll talk about futures. If you have a specific thing you would like us to analyze today, let us know what it is. Send it on in at powertradingradio.com by clicking that little button there that says Power Blast. You can type in your question, send it to us, it'll come to us in the studio, or join the chat. Join Paul and Sabrina and Gaier on Online Trading Academy's YouTube page, or you can go out to uh, Power Trading Radios and you can say hello to Dunkster and Ruben. We've got Stacy. we've got... Uh, and Big Eb. Well, welcome back, Big Eb. So send in your comments, questions. We'll be right back with Ron Lumbo after a short break. What if you knew the income strategies professional investors used? The strategies designed to generate active income from the financial markets. After all, no one's going to care more about your money than you. I learned that I can be in control of my 401k. I used to work for money, now I have my money working for me. With the right training and guidance, you can learn the skills to become a more confident investor and make your money work harder for you. Want to find out what's possible for you? You can, as long as you're willing to take the first step and call OTA today. Call for your free tickets right now, and you'll also receive a free professional insider's kit loaded with lessons from some of our top instructors on topics like enhancing your retirement strategy, capital preservation, and income generation. The Professional's Insider Kit makes it so you can get started right now. Call 888-304-8723 or visit us online at tradingacademy.com and schedule your free class today. Click is something I wish I had when I started because it facilitates the learning process a lot quicker. This is not about taking many trades, it's about taking the right trade. It helps me save myself from myself. It's just a revolutionary educational tool. It just propels you through the learning curve. The biggest shock for me is the level of innovation that happens within the company and it's continuing. It's just perfect in this new century of trading. Everyone's on the same side, and I think that's what I love about it more than anything else. Helping each other, supporting each other, all with the same objective. Again, wonderful. There's no mountain high enough that the, the leaders in this organization won't climb for their students. They'll, they'll just never give up. It can only help. It can only make one a better trader. Gives you the, one of the most valuable things we all have, and that's time. Welcome back to Power Trading Radio Live with your host, Merlin Rothfeld, and today's special guest. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Power Trading Radio. Merlin Rothfeld with you for your Wednesday afternoon. I'm going to give a quick shout out to a couple people who, who joined a bit late. Jorge's like, I'm out here too. I'll give you a shout out, Jorge. Welcome. And uh, Marco as well for uh, joining on online Power Trading Radio's YouTube page. And uh, let's see. And Abby, welcome back. All right. Our guest today has been on a few times this year. It was Maiden Voyage in uh, January of 2020. And he's been on a few times since then. We've got Ron Lembo joining us. Ron, how you doing? Merlin, Merlin. Thank you, thank you. Always fun, always fun, always an honor. Yes, yes. Remember, if you remember, last we were speaking of Barrett Jackson and Dream Cars. Yes, that's and, right. Yeah, the list is out. The list is out for the top five 
um, of the event on what they went for. Well, you, did you so, did you did you finally come up with yours? Because I know after the show you were perplexed. For those who might not remember, I, I asked. Uh, Ron, I said, if you got, because you mentioned Barrett Jackson was coming to town. I said, if you have your your ultimate dream car, this that one vehicle. You said, if I had to pick one, this would be it. And you, I think, you didn't give me a clear answer last time, did you? No. Do you think? No, no, no. So what is I it? Walk, I, so my my ideal car would be a, just an Audi e-tron, something very, very, very simple. I'm not a very, very big car guy. I'm okay. Very not, but I can tell you this: of the top five now from Barrett Jackson, the top. Sale was at three million on the 2020 Corvette with a VIN number of number one. <laughs> wow. Okay, but I and it went to charity. But I would be okay with number five, with the top five, <laughs> and that was the '69 uh, Chevy Camaro, and that went out the door off the block at one million ninety four thousand five hundred dollars. So for a '69 Camaro, number five. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Certainly wouldn't be spending yeah, that kind yeah. of money myself on a car. But uh, yeah. I'm glad somebody did and went to charity. All right. Well, I think if you can actually find the original of the car that I mentioned on the last time, which is a 1955 Porsche 550 Spider, you're looking at about $2 million for one in junk condition, like scrap metal almost. So, yeah. I, oh. And I would never spend that. So mine was not no. an original. It was a replica, and I loved it. It didn't cost me that much money. All right. Let's, uh, let's steer away from the car show, which is coming up later on today. We'll do the car show, followed by, followed by the sports show. And later on tonight, if you guys tune in, we'll have the politics show. Totally kidding. <laughs> We're never going to that road. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We've had some pretty interesting moves out here, Ron. Markets uh, just, they look like we're going to give back some ground, and all of a sudden, three days of just, hello, surge like crazy. Of course, a lot of it has to do with uh, what was expected, which was that this virus was not that big of a deal. Uh, still not out of the woods yet, but it sounds like like the last pandem few pandemics, which is just, eh, was a bunch of political hype, or not political, uh, media hype and then just dissipated. So we got a huge market surge. Anything out there that's tickling your fancy or looking interesting from a trading perspective for you? Uh, from a bigger, bigger picture, the, the dollar uh, is looking pretty strong. So I'm looking to get long the dollar somewhere right around that 97, uh, three quarter mark to 97 uh, area. Sure. And um, on the futures side for the physicals, looking at cotton getting long right there at 64.87. And quite frankly, Merlin, I'm a bit indecisive on indexes. I mean, we are off to the races again. Here we go, all-time highs, all-time highs. Yeah. But finding a few intraday short-term trading opportunities on Starbucks and CVS, Starbucks right around 92 half and CVS right around there at 74, find that for some opportunity. Well, sure. let's, let's, break sure. those, let's break those down one by one. Um, you mentioned the dollar, which we'll circle back to. But I'll start with cotton. TJ brought up the, the cotton chart here. I know there are some old lines on here. Not sure whether that was from us or someone else. But uh, we've got the cotton futures on here. What is about cotton that you're, you're interested in? And uh, walk us through kind of the bigger picture here and what, you, what you're looking at. All right. So the area right down there at 64.87 on a weekly time frame. And uh, I, just have, I just do like that area for the you know just simply let me just pull up my chart the way that it looks on the chart yep. of course you know you trust the chart first and foremost charts don't lie um, people do no they do not <laughs> i <laughs> love, love that i love that one i do love that one and that in and, and around that area is where i do and would look for some retracements and what else do i have on my side well it looks like to me i have an impulse and then i have a bit of a retracement impulse and i also have seasonality on my side as well for a little bit longer and well there's no real clear i mean i don't find any long-term or big sellers before 75 and that's that's why i like cotton okay but on those shorter term trades for starbucks and for cvs well you know maybe those are things we're going to take a look at tomorrow in class and find out what type of opportunities we have when we start our trading contest Ooh. competition so that'll be fun i know it's fun and clear and I, the best part is I get to pick all the trophies that everybody gets. So <laughs> that's my fun, right? Nice. Well, we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll circle back and talk about the the contest out there. So TJ has got the chart up here. Uh, you guys can see that what Ron's really addressing here. You, you kind of have two different perspectives of this one. You can look at this chart of cotton, which TJ has going back on a. I'm assuming this is a weekly TJ. Yes, this is a weekly. Uh, if you look back at 2018, you know from 
really May of 2018 through August of 2019, it was just a beautiful downtrend, respecting um, supply levels and selling off at almost every one of them. But that, that trend has broken, right? The, the move we've made up really since December of 2020 and early 20, uh, sorry, December 2019 and early 2020, it's a new high situation. And it's not saying that we're out of the woods and this is all of a sudden going to become a new uptrend, but it does lean that way. And again, everything we do is about probability. If you, if you look back here, you know, do you think that there's a probability from this big picture here that, that cotton is going to just have a big crater, or does it look like it actually might trend back up towards some of these highs we've seen here in the past, seeming rather cyclical? So I think that that is, will probably continue to the upside and saying, look, where's that buy point that I would be comfortable buying back in? To be honest, for, for Ron, it, it may not get down to your, you know, 60, what level is it, 6470, somewhere there, 6480? Correct, yeah, yeah. 64, three half, yeah. And if it doesn't get yeah. there, you, you don't make the trade, you just reassess it. But that's the level you're saying for yourself. Years ago in April, I think actually like right now kind of marks the, the last class I taught physical location, and that was about 10 years ago. Um, I, like you, like to play games in class with the students. I do all kinds of trading games. So walk us through, you have to tell us exactly what you were trading, but what's the, what's the competition that you kind of put your students through in that classroom environment to help engage, to understand the content, and really build a sense of uh, camaraderie? A little bit of everything, as a matter of fact. First of all, we keep it very, very simple. We keep it very, very fun. Keep it very, very social and inclusive. Uh, very, very important so that students can learn from each other while they're working through that process. Um, the, the platform click to facilitate the process in the learning process through throughout the time in class makes things even easier. Um, so the environment is a lot more friendly because you have less frustration if people can get through the actual mechanical processes of putting a trade on. So that's fun. And, you know, it's, it's social. That's, that's part of, you know, an importance of being around a community and being within OTA, but then, and even the way that the class is structured, the front end of the class is where all the theoretical will be and, you know, where you really get into the books and, and such. And as you hit, or as we had rather, excuse me, to the later part of the week, it's, you know, a lot of hands-on activity. So what do we do? Well, let's have some fun with it, play some games. Right. Yeah. And it, it yeah. Small, small trophies too. Yeah. So that, um, we talk about the 1% trophy idea, too. We'll get into that tomorrow in class. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, I had a, a story, which, which, was a, which was a fun one. So I always do a trading game. And, of course, we all set different rules for what the game might be. And I went through at the very beginning of the exercise and said, guys, you are not to trade these stocks. And I listed five of them because they were either overpriced, they're super volatile. And of course, when you're learning how to trade in that controlled environment, and this classroom environment was under my control for years, obviously it's under yours, Ron. Um, mm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat responsible. I feel like I have to stay on top of it. So I want to make sure that these guys don't start developing bad habits. I'm going to keep them with stuff that moves not so slow that it just bores you all day, but something that uh, has decent range, but not going to kill you. And one guy, was always trading Apple. And Apple was the most, at that point, was one of the more volatile stocks that you could get into. And it was actually a perfect lesson because all this guy did, every day that we traded, he was the biggest loser in class. Every single time we mm. did a live trading exercise. And it was perfect. And he, he kind of got upset with me because I kept picking on him and said, you, you realize that you're paying for an education from someone who does this every day, and I'm telling you specifically, don't do this. Your classmates, every single one of you, has followed the rules, and most of them are doing pretty good. Granted, that not all trades work out, and, you know, some trades lose, that's fine, that's part of what we're doing, but you lost on almost every single trade that you did. You lost more than I told you was your maximum stop loss limit, and you can trade the stock I told you not to trade. So, have you learned anything from that? And his response was priceless to the whole room, because he was embarrassed as all could be, and he said, I'm only doing this in this classroom environment. I would never do this at home. And his wife, who was sitting directly to the left of him, just starts laughing out loud. It was, it was um, rather entertaining. I don't know if that marriage is still together, <laughs> but I'm going go to <laughs> I'm gonna go out limb and say no. But I love the game side of it. It makes a lot of fun to bring everybody into it um, and, and, and keep those tight set of rules because, as we all yeah. know, it's all about the rules. And that is what, you know, Merlin, I'm glad you touched upon that because before and, and before we even got the game started tomorrow, that was the one thing that I had mentioned where we're playing a game, yes, but we're not here to form bad habits. We're here to build good ones mm -hmm. from, from, the, from the start. So that was, 
Yeah, that is that is certainly it. And another good thing when we involve a lot of people in that trading environment, math is in our favor where we can look across a larger sample of trades and look at you know how the true probabilities of, of supply and demand and proper risk management work out. You know, for everybody out there that's trading in sim mode or paper trading, I would give you the same answer. You know, people say, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this in real life, but I'm going to do it in my paper account. If I gave you a handgun and you said, I'm just going to go to the shooting range, <laughs> and, and you say, I'm going, to, I'm going to shoot it in a way that I wouldn't do it in real life, don't do that. You should, you should hey, am I, am I right? I mean, this, is a, this can be a dangerous thing. So don't develop bad habits by doing something in sim mode or paper trading. Do it the right way that you were taught or that your strategy yeah. teaches you to do so you don't get caught off guard. Uh, let's do this. Let's take a quick break. I have, um, do you have a platform up there in front of you? Me? Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, I have. A, I, oh, I don't yeah. know if you're a big Forex guy, but uh, Jason, one of our viewers out there, he wants, well, we'll pick one. I'm just going to say, um, he says, GBP and JPY and GBP Swiss Franc, the charts look similar but different countries. Any reason for that? Um, well, I'll, I'll answer that one when I come back. That one's actually pretty easy to, to go to. Um, but we'll talk about some of those differences, see if I have any other questions coming through here on our other channels. Nothing that I see right now, so we'll, uh, we'll keep it at that. Uh, we come back, Ron Lembo and I will go more into the markets. Also, I want to talk about uh, Starbucks and CVS were two that he mentioned earlier. If you guys have anything else you'd like Ron and I to check out, send it on in. PowerTradingRadio.com. Click the little button there that says Power Blast, and we'll analyze all those as soon as we come back, right after a short break. Learning this way is fine when the stakes are low. But when the stakes are high, you need to rely on skill, not just knowledge. At Online Trading Academy, you build your skill one step at a time. We teach our students to trade and invest with a strategy, not a hunch. You learn our methodology, then practice it. You get to make mistakes and ask questions and watch instructors make live trades. Develop your skill the right way. Click here to get started with Online Trading Academy. Meet Mac. As a trader, he liked the signals that came from technical analysis tools, but they didn't help him find the best trades consistently, so he searched for a new approach. Mac attended Online Trading Academy's free class and discovered their core strategy, a trading methodology that spots when big banks are likely buying and selling, so everyday investors can too. Mac carved out a path to trade and invest with confidence, and so can you. You're listening to Power Trading Radio Live. Watch the show live or on the archive at PowerTradingRadio.com and YouTube. Or download the podcast from iTunes or wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Power Trading Radio. It is your Wednesday edition. We've got Ron Lembo on the program today. We're, we're going over some of the different markets he was looking at. One of those was cotton earlier. Uh, the question that came in on the break, or just before the break, from uh, Jason, one of our regulars out there. Hello, Jason. Thanks for the question. He says, British pound, Japanese yen, and British pound, Swiss franc. The charts look similar, but different for different countries. Any reason for that? Sure. Obviously, the, the strength of the British pound is the British pound. But relative to it, the economy or business or monetary policy of Japan is going to be different than that of, let's say, Switzerland or the Swiss franc. So it has to do with the economies of each different country, so, or, or announcements that come out for the different countries. That's why you're seeing the differences out there. And uh, sometimes there are subtle differences, sometimes there are extreme differences, depending on the relationship between the British pound and that other currency, whether that's the US dollar, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, whatever. Th that's why you see those differences, which is why it's important to look at a bunch of different currency pairs to find relative strength or weakness. For example, if you're a US dollar, I look at the US dollar, Japanese yen, US dollar, British pound, US dollar, euro, but you notice they all have US dollar in them. Out of that six or seven I'm look at, one of them is going to be stronger on any given day, and one of them will be weaker, meaning one of them is a better buying opportunity, one of those is a better selling opportunity. Okay, uh, Ron, you mentioned Starbucks earlier. Let's talk about our favorite cup of coffee, although I don't drink coffee, but uh, what is it about Starbucks that uh, you, you found interesting and uh, maybe a potential trade opportunity for your students tomorrow? Uh, well, if I look on a daily chart right around the area of 92 half to about 94, half on the daily. I have a pretty strong move away there that looks uh, looks attractive. But again, I, the thing that I'm um, most encouraged by is right now it's showing pretty good profit potential. Um, it's something that I would be, we would look to or I'd, lo I'd like to look towards just a daily income trade. This isn't something that um, 
you know, it might take a, a few days to get there. But again, if the overall index is Merlin, if they continue still up, I'm not going to look to stay short for very long. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, it does. You know, right yeah, now it's okay. an interesting point because you have uh, kind of this little island of price over the past couple of weeks where it just it gapped down. Looks like it's actually wanting mm-hmm. to retrace back up there. And, you know, at that mm-hmm. point, We'll have to make that decision, but uh, all right, I like that supply well level. Well said, well said. Thank you, yeah, thank no you. Problem. And then we were looking for CVS, or looking at, excuse me, CVS. And yeah, 74, 75, I don't know. We've, we had a hard time staying up there in days past, right, that $75 area. Uh, not a lot of buying pressure in and around the 71 or 72. So if we get back up to 75, okay, I'm, I'd consider... Um, you know, it's considered CVS being expensive. Sure, sure. You know, and what's interesting about the CVS chart here, everybody, it, this is really, to me, it's behavioral analysis, right? It's looking at the nature of the beast here. And if you look at what's been going on with CVS, it's obviously since uh, middle of last year, you can say since March of 2019, it's been struggling, but then all of a sudden it really broke out mid-year, it looked phenomenal, and everything looked great until its peak here in November. Now, of course, we didn't know that was the peak. It just happened to, in hindsight, be the peak. But notice the nature of the beast now. If you said the characteristics from that uptrend from 2019 through the very end of 2019, it was a series of higher highs, higher lows, everything looking great. Does it look different in this window of time from November of last year to where we are today? I think you'd all agree, just at a quick visual, it looks almost like it's the reverse pattern. So this could be a great opportunity for a potential short here in CVS. And again, we're not looking at fundamentals. We're not looking at anything about the company. It's just saying, for whatever reason, sellers are winning this this battle since November. They're making lower highs, lower lows. So at that situation, I think Ron's right here again by saying, I'd like to look for a shorting opportunity if it comes back up and tests those highs. So um, nice spot on this one. I hope it gets up to those levels for you. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But, uh, But a shout out to all the options traders who can benefit for waiting around until and if it does. Right. So it's always fun to be one of those as well. I'm not bragging because the market has a way of humbling us, doesn't it, Merlin? That it does. If we do. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I, I usually don't talk about any of my trades on the show for that specific reason. I don't like it. The market has ears, and it will flatten you mm-hmm. in a second. Uh, question from Paul. He says, do you use stop limit buys on a straight trade or a short? And what is the best way to get those to trigger consistently. So let's say you've got your level up there. Well, go back to Starbucks, TG. I think that was probably a better example because we had the multiple lines on SBUX. There we go. Um, you look at the Starbucks, and the zone is roughly you know 92.50 to 92, or sorry, 94.20 is kind of that area that I've got mapped out there. Um, you know, do you do you put a stop limit out there, or I mean, how do you get it to alert you? Do you watch it every day? Do you set alerts on your software program? What do you do? Alerts. Alerts, sure. Alerts on a mobile device are okay. I mean, once I've decided where I'm ready to engage in the marketplace, Merlin, my job's done. Yeah. You know, h- how I choose to put the order in, that's the personality and style of the trader. Right. But my job's pretty much done. And, yeah, I, I, I will put at least, you know, a dollar or two worth of an alert right into your phone. Some program or another, ever, all of them have them, and that's it. Yep. You know, for, for Paul, who, who mentioned that one, you know, this is one of the beautiful things about different platforms have different functionality. Right now, Click, we're building that piece in, but it is the ability to put in your entry, your stop loss, and your price target. So right now, if you wanted to on various platforms, you could put all those variables in, your entry, stop loss, price target, and say, until it gets to 92.50, don't do anything. But once it gets there, then all of a sudden go and make that trade for me. And, and I, I do that sometimes. More often than not, what I do is I'll just set an alert on that line. So what I can do on, on some of my platforms is I can simply go here and put a line on the chart, click it, it'll say, you know, 9250 and I can right mouth click and it'll say, alert me. And it'll send me a text message when that security hits that level. So the nice thing is I can go about my day and then all of a sudden I get an alert. I can just go pull up my phone or my, my desktop computer and, and look at that and reevaluate because things may have changed between this moment right now that we see on the screen and maybe a week from now, price could have done something that would have made me go, meh, I'm not as confident. So that's how I would do it out there. But yes, you could use uh, stop limit orders or stop market, but there's a risk involved with those. So make sure you understand stop limit versus stop market. Um, Ron, you are, I don't even know where you are today. Where are you teaching? You're, you're probably in Arizona, right? We, no, Baltimore. 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 Yeah, you remember what Frank Zappa asked of the place. 
Wings and what's new in Baltimore. So I did not know yeah, that, that, but I do know. Are you going to go have yeah, breakfast at St. Alfonso? Here. Are you going to go to St. Alfonso's Pancake Breakfast? I am now that you've mentioned it, sir. Thank you. <laughs> and one of my favorite albums, Apostrophe Overnight Sensation by Frank Zappa. If you guys want to be tripped out for a little bit, listen to that one. That's a weird well, album. There you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so you're in Baltimore now. Where's your teaching schedule going to yeah. take you? We're, we're off to, from sunny Baltimore to sunny Seattle, then back around to Scottsdale and Chandler. Um, tomorrow night we have a uh, grad event over here in our, Boston, our Baltimore Center at uh, between 5 and 6.30, so that's going to be some fun as well. Nice. Going to be talking about, yeah, we'll be talking about pre-market and post-market uh, routines and activities to align yourself with, with success. So we're looking forward to it, Marlon, and it's always fun, so Absolutely. always fun now, to be on the show. So with that, that, uh, that kind of aftermarket event, is that a special thing you're doing for Baltimore? Yes, sir, yes, sir, for awesome. the grad, for, for the grads that, uh, of the city, or excuse me, of the center, yes, here in Baltimore. Yep. Cool. Yeah. That's very nice of you. And again, for those of you who, who might not know, a lot of times these instructors will do special events. Uh, so if you are a member of a specific center, in this case, Ron was talking about Baltimore, but uh, this goes on at a lot of different centers. It's really kind of up to the instructor. Sometimes they're so tired they can't do it. But Ron just wants to keep on teaching out there. So he's going to do some special Why sessions. Not? Why right? not? Why not? Hey, I love yeah. doing it too, especially give with, back. The, especially with the grads. Student give back, so absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Ron, give thanks back. so much for coming on. I hope the remainder of your class is phenomenal. I hope you get some great moves like today. I mean, let's, let's have some more volume. Yeah. Right. out there for you. Thanks for coming on. Hey, all the best, Merlin. All Thank right. you. All right, take care. Because it was Ron Lembo. He's teaching out in Baltimore this weekend. If you're a graduate, hey, check out your, or contact your local center. I don't know if there's space available for the event that he's going to be doing outside of his regular class hours, but if there is, contact your local center. Do not just show up. Make sure you contact. Uh, these things sometimes get really, really crowded. But for all of you, no matter which center you're at, I would encourage you to go and check out Talk to your local counselors, talk to your local center, and say, you know, who's going to be there? What's, are there any special events coming up? It's all about engagement. It's all about community and making sure that you have like-minded people around. And uh, the more information you get, the, um, I guess the easier it is to overcome many of the obstacles that the markets can throw your way. Ron mentioned he'll be teaching in Seattle, Scottsdale, area, and Chandler, Arizona. To find out more information about those classes, you can click those links that are going to show up in social media. You simply click on that one. You type in your zip code that will tell you which of our 48 physical brick-and-mortar campuses are nearest you. If you are uh, listening to this on the podcast right now, and not watching the video, just go to powertradingradio.com. You can do it anytime you want. You can click the free class button at the top of the screen to send uh, to find out more information about the center closest to you, or you can always send us questions at powertradingradio.com as well by clicking Power Blast. All right, uh, that will do it for this segment. I'm going to take a quick break so I can move some things around the screen and get you all set and prepped for your earnings announcements and economic calendar for tomorrow's trading session. So stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back after a short break. We've never seen a platform created with the driving principle of helping people consistently make better trading decisions. We know consistently successful investing and trading is about much more than simply taking advantage of the right opportunities. It's also about passing on the wrong ones. Click helps you score potential trade opportunities and calculate stop levels, customizing risk management to be in line with your personal trading plan. Click is also a smart platform. Because it links to OTA student portal, Click can serve a custom experience to every user based on what they trade, based on how they trade, their experience level, which OTA classes have been completed, and much more. Simple enough for new investors and powerful enough for the advanced trader. All while integrating OTA's award-winning education, tools, and services. When we walk into a class and talk to students that have been trained by other platforms and now trading on Click, they're just ecstatic. They're just, they can't wait. To, have it all connected to live execution, which will be coming soon towards the end of the year. And uh, everybody here is very, very excited. I love it. Not only do I love it, everyone I talk to that's used it loves it. It's so simple and easy. Um, breaking down the, the process of core strategy to placing a trade is just, uh, is just phenomenal. And it really shortens the learning curve. It's one platform to get familiar with that you can then apply to futures, forex, options, proactive investor. It's almost like the, somehow my, my thoughts have been distilled down into a sequence of steps. This platform, I feel that I could become an expert in a much, much shorter time, but with a great amount of confidence around actually getting to be able to get the screen to look like I want it to. The fact that Click is a, an online platform is unbelievable. I'm placing a trade that I'm comfortable with and I'm ready to go, you know, bring it on.
Welcome back to Power Trading Radio, live, fueled by Online Trading Academy. For more information, visit PowerTradingRadio.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Power Trading Radio. It is your Wednesday edition. I want to thank Ron Lenbo for coming on the program today, giving us some insights into what he's looking at, how his class operates out there in Baltimore today, and also looking at Starbucks and CBS and Cotton as well. Hopefully, you guys learned something on today's show. For those of you who might be interested in taking a class with Ron, he mentioned he is teaching in Baltimore this week, also doing a special event for graduates out there in the next couple of days. I forgot, I think it was tonight or tomorrow. Um, you can also find Ron in Seattle, and I, I love how uh, there was a gentleman who was laughing out there on that one because he said sunny Seattle and CG on Online Training Academy's YouTube page just starts laughing. And I agree, sunny Seattle? I don't know about that one. Uh, he'll be in Seattle, Scottsdale, and Chandler, Arizona, which probably has plenty of sunshine and triple de degree temperatures. Let me go through a couple of questions here. Sabrina was asking about 5G, if it's something we've discussed. We really haven't discussed 5G much on the program. You know, this is a technology that I don't know much about. Uh, I, I hear a lot of bad things about it. Of course, there's a lot of potential good things with regards to speed of transactions and the Internet of Things and how devices communicate with each other. Um, Larry has been a big fan of it. He was talking about Skyworks as something he added to his portfolio a long time ago because of 5G and the potential for it. And Skyworks has just gone absolutely through the roof. So, uh, but that's the extent of it. You know, as far as trading off it, I think it might make things faster from a micro transactional type of perspective, but it's not something we really focus on too much on the program. The other side of this was Big Ed said, uh, Merlin, are you concerned trading from your mobile phone as far as your phone being hacked or do you use a VPN? I'm really not concerned at all. I, I don't worry about that stuff at all. I'll trade from my phone, no problem. I check on my accounts. I'm always on top of what's being moved where. Um, I, I set up alerts. Any, any credit card I have, um, alert set up. So if there's one transaction of any amount, it shows up on my screen. So I'm not worried about that at all. You know, I think media may have portrayed it a little bit, uh, a little bit too scarily. I guess if that's the right way of saying it. That fear mongering, I guess, with regards to the phones. You know, part of it is when you set your passwords and things, make sure it's something that's not like Merlin one two three four. You know, that's obviously you, you start to have some vulnerability there. There's also a lot of little tricks that I do when I'm inputting codes or typing in passwords and things like that to bluff anything if someone's doing a, a key logger or something like that. So not too concerned about that one, Big M. Um, and Stacy. Uh, as far as self-directing, yeah, I'm sure that they would manage your money for you and give up 1%, but why would, why would you want to give up that 1% when you can do the exact same thing that they're going to do? They're going to basically do a simple pie chart allocation of your investments. They're going to say, okay, you should be in this, this, and this based off of your age. That's pretty much what they do. You can do the exact same thing without having to give them that 1% just self-direct it yourself because what they won't be doing is when the market crashes, and you notice I said when because it will happen, when that market crashes and they are managing your money for you, they're just going to keep your allocations right where they're at. If you understand market behavior and markets start to crash or there are triggers that say, hey, you should be getting out, then you would get out and allocate your money towards more defensive things or just stay in cash and sidestep those big market sell-offs. Your brokers will not do that. They want assets under management. That's how they're getting paid. So be careful when you're saying, hey, I want someone to manage my money for you. Take a class, take strategic investor, do it yourself. All right. Let's look at your economic calendar for tomorrow. Thursday already? Wow, man. Thursday, February 6th brings us four announcements for the U.S. So you can see you got preliminary non-farm productivity, unemployment claims, natural gas storage, and challenger job cuts. For the euro, EU economic forecasts and German trade balance. For the New Zealand dollar, inflation expectations. Australia with the RBA monetary policy statement and Japan with leading indicators. Looking at your earnings calendar for tomorrow. You've got Total, Philip Morris, Sanofi, Bristol Myers Squibb, Cigna, Becton Dixon, Estee Lauder and Company. And then I don't have a guest lined up. I'm, I'm going to continue to try to get uh, others on this show. I, I'll leave that slot open for right now. Right now, I don't have anybody. So you know what you can do if there's something that's just a, you have a burning question, something you go, you know what? I'm just going to ask this one and maybe I'm going to answer it live on air. What I encourage you to do is go to powertrainingradio.com. You can click that Power Blast button and send in on whatever those comments or questions are. And I'll see if I, the sooner you do it, the more likely I have time to prep and get it all ready for the show with supporting information and graphics. If you do it live, sometimes I just, I can't get all that stuff. So uh, the timing is everything here. If you like today's show, again, click the thumbs up button on our face, our YouTube channels out there. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to learn more about options, futures, commodities, want to learn about proactive investing and managing those long-term accounts, click that link that showed up in social media just a little bit ago. You type in your zip code to tell you which of our campuses is nearest you. Hopefully we can help educate you on how to use these markets to your advantage. Until then, happy trading everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.
You're listening to Power Trading Radio live. Watch the show live or on the archive at powertradingradio.com and YouTube. Or download the podcast from iTunes or wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. 